watch your shot. Yeah, we'll let them know. What do you got? You say what? You tell me, you tell me. Come on, there. You point to my tower, you point to my What makes Green Berets different from the rest of the Special Operations community, uh, my personal opinion is our adherence to uh, the fact that we're quite professionals. Since it's going to be dark when we move into the trees, I want to keep it tight so that way we're spending as little amount of time as possible. So when we get in the trees, we get a good accountability, I make sure they know the building and then they're going to lead out from there and I'll pick up the rear. Uh, the thing that makes the Green Berets different from uh, everybody else in special operations is that we're very adaptive. Um, there, there is no, there's no no in our vocabulary. Uh, I guess what I would like to say is, uh, we, it's rare that we can fail because we find another way around. Uh, our biggest thing is to try to do um, everything we can by, with, and through our partner force. Um, and uh, we're very well rounded, making it to where uh, um, adapting is easy for us because we've done it all. Determination, I would say. Uh, the refusal to quit. I mean, you get that a lot in SOF, uh, but we really try and live by it. Uh, you know, and we're, we're a pretty humble group of guys, real tight knit uh, community. And that's why I don't really like talking us up too much, but. Yeah, I, I say it's it's that determination. That's what got me through selection through the Q course. Uh, like my dad told me before uh, I was selected, he's like, whatever happens, just don't quit. So, and that's the one thing that got me through. I'm not the big uh, bulky Navy SEAL dude, or I'm not the biggest guy that can lift the most weight, but I got the same qualities that you'll find in everybody on my ODA. So. Something people don't know about the Green Berets. Well, there's quite a bit. Uh, one, we get umbrellaed under uh, just the term Special Forces as a whole throughout the community, uh, which Green Berets is a very specific piece within the uh, Special Operations community. We were a Special Forces tab, but that term is generally used for all elements within U.S. OCOM. Uh, Green Berets specifically are U.S. Army Special Forces. We have five major uh, set mission goals, which mainly include uh, unconventional warfare, foreign internal defense, uh, special reconnaissance, direct action, and counterterrorism operations. We have a multitude of sub uh, uh, tasks that we take part of, but we are the Department of Defense's lead for unconventional warfare operations. I would definitely say that uh, our best quality is being adaptive to what uh, the environment gives us. Hey, I got him. You get cover for Jake. Cop camp, cover that door. All right. Hey, what kind of blood is it? Is it squirting? Yeah, yeah.
Uh, I'd say the command of mission is uh, um, it, it's an ability to affect uh, an area that is hard to reach. Uh, and, you know, the, the best way that uh, to describe the commandos is um, all the other forces can't get there or reach that area. Uh, they're able to bring a large force, fly them into um, you know deep into enemy territory and, and affect. Um, some of the, the higher ups and be able to uh, get uh, you know multiple enemy KI and um, disrupt a large network uh, with uh, just one night. Uh, so I mean to describe them and be uh, effective. When did special forces first pick up the commando mission? Uh, really, it first got picked up in 2006 when we realized uh, that. Throughout our combat FID focused uh, mission that we're conducting here, we needed deliberate, direct action dedicated units uh, to support what was growing into the ANA. Uh, started off with the model that was kind of used in Iraq, we're standing up the ICTF uh, and took a contingent of about 70 commandos, which became the commando training cadre to Jordan with uh, 3rd Special Forces group members and ran them through my array training there. Uh, that group came back in 2006 and started the training up of the first three, uh, actually four CAMDACs uh, that went operational by 2007. Uh, and then since then we're now at nine CAMDACs as a whole uh, under ANASOC. I hope that the commandos in the ANA, uh, out of the training that we give them, kind of get that uh, warrior mentality that we try to uh, push on the enemy, we try and push that aggressive level, man. Um, just that hopefully they see how we act as soldiers or as a team guy, and it kind of motivates them to be aggressive when they need to be, because they're going into harm's way uh, just as much as any other, if not more, than any other ANASF unit. Uh, so they're, they're essentially the unit that the government's going to call when a district center is overrun or there's a bad situation developing in a not so good part of the country. So they need to be prepared for that type of thing and we hope that during our training we do prepare them for that because we're fighting right alongside them and if we can't depend on the guys that we're fighting with uh, to act like we act or at least the modicum of how we act then we're, uh, the training is not really valuable. So out of the training aspect of it we try and make it realistic because these guys are about to go into harm's way right after that training. The points of focus that I drive in the training when uh, training the commandos in the NASF, um, at, at the tactical level, um, the members of my detachment uh, work that level, uh, now I'd say company uh, level down, and they work hard on the, uh, on the tactical side of the house, the basics, being masters of basics, like everyone should be who wants to be a high level operator, land navigation, uh, day and night, weapon emplacement, uh, marksmanship, close quarters combat. Try to focus uh, centric on the mission that they have at hand. Uh, and generally, it's half operations to conduct a deliberate clear with the possibility of IEDs and knowing that we're going to be hit from strong point positions once set up. So, defensive perimeters, uh, accountability of personnel, uh, IED detection and uh, mitigation, entering and clearing a room proper SSC. These are things that we were uh, hit on heavy at the attack field level. Chuck, status of search? The mission set that we have currently uh, trying to train them into operating by themselves is uh, I'd like them to have more capabilities. Uh, we had uh, situations where they are very dependent on our, our uh, airlifts and they're very dependent on doing certain things certain ways. Uh, I'd like them to be go back to the basics and understand how to shoot, move, and communicate and not lock themselves down in one area and hope that the Air Force drops bombs on people. I'd like them to be able to understand how to maneuver again and get after the enemy, um, as well as uh, branching out and utilizing uh, their armor package 
and, and driving places, uh, trying to uh, get inventive with their mission sets so that you know they uh, learn that adaptiveness that we're trying to convey upon them that hey, just because you don't have something doesn't mean you can't make it work. of the commandos in ANSF can be pretty interesting at times. Uh, a lot of guys uh, honestly can relate. It It depends on the platoon or the sock that you're going out with. If you have a bad sock, or they can say it's the best mission you've been on if you have a good sock or platoon. It just depends on who you guys work with and the amount of training and uh, effort to build rapport that you put into it yourself. I've had great experience with both commandos and ANSF. Uh, ANSF, to me, are as close to uh, an American ODA as you're going to get in Afghanistan, as far as partner force goes. Uh, they got they got diehard relentless aggression, which is awesome, and the guys take ownership of uh, their work and of the mission. I've been pushed back in the stack by ANSF members, and um, same thing, uh, commandos. Uh, if you fight valiantly or if you display to them uh, the courage needed to face the enemy, they'll go with you. Um, they just need a little bit more encouragement than the ANSF guys, which usually are, uh, in some cases, dragging us to the objective. So. Oh, okay, okay. It's like an RPG. Hey, Vic. Yep. Here, come here. To have the ANSF and the commandos working together is a lot like trying to have um, SF work with uh, a Ranger Battalion. Uh, the Ranger Battalion is great at what they do and they are very regimented and they have a uh, I would say a, a straight line kind of mentality and um, we try to work outside the box and like I said we if something comes up we try to adapt to it and work, work around so uh, I believe the ANSF are kind of the same and that part goes uh, so to have them underneath the commandos um, command it, it, it makes it to where the um, they have issues as far as like you have uh, any time you have special operations working together. Uh, I think it can be uh, great potential though uh, because uh, in previous missions that we've done since we've been here uh, we've had ANSF uh, and commandos mixed into the same unit um, uh, part of it so like our support element we had ANSF and commandos with each other. And the commandos seemed to to feed off of the NSF energy uh, and move out a lot better and they they wanted to go out and fight and do other stuff. Um, but to have that uh, uh, capability to work together, they really have to work through a lot of egos, uh, which I think is just like any uh, special operations community. Uh, you gotta put your ego aside sometimes and try to get uh, get that together, but I really see a lot of potential uh, coming from them and a lot of good things in the future as long as they can keep those egos out of it and, and um, start pushing each other. So I, I can see the ANSF taking our role uh, at when we leave and being those mentors for the commandos and the, the leaders. Grazing, no arterial bleed! Oh, uh, okay. Alright, 
My only concern with this dude, huh? my only concern with this dude is like he, he doesn't want to turn his head. Okay. So if we got to egress out of here, he's, he's shit. But I mean, we can get, we got to fucking man up to get out of here. As fast? Well, yeah. Alright. Hey, just like you're like turning a corner, I want you to try to just snap a picture of that. Alright, bro. Need light? Alright, man. Same thing, man. I try to get a money shot on it. Mental preparations, uh, we do a pretty good job, I think, of when we go into a reverse cycle of utilizing every single waking moment we have toward rehearsals and preparing our equipment and going around that uh, everyone stays mission focused and that the element leaders are pulling their, their uh, additional members U.S. aside and walking through the plans over and over and over again so that once we get off the aircraft, we already know exactly where azimuth we need to head toward. We already know the first building that's going to be used as a strong point and then where every additional building goes from there. Uh, it, we are already mentally preparing for once contact's taken, how we're going to move to support that contact, how we're going to get to a casualty, how we're going to get that casualty back, where our closest HLZs are by phase. Uh, these are mental rehearsals that are, are going down constantly through the guys' heads, especially mine. Uh, you know, kind of being the team center of it all when it comes to a mass cow situation or something like that, like that, that's my main focus. So I'm always in the back of my head thinking by phase, by element, you know, if, if crisis happens here, how am I getting there? Who am I taking with me? What's my fastest route? Where's my close, closest HLZ? And if I get hit on the way there, who am I calling them to reinforce me? How are they going to get to me? And then how are we still going to push forward to that crisis site and get that casualty out? It's happened more than a couple of times so far since we've been here. We have successfully every time made it to the wounded or the uh, the, the dead partner in four souls. We're gonna, we have successfully medevaced them out every time. Uh, knock on wood, we still have a couple ops left, but uh, that that has worked out uh, across the board. And so I think everybody does something a little different. Some guys will, you know, right right before you get on the helicopter, you know, you, you'll see the guys kind of pull off to the corner. And, uh, and you can see them going through a mental checklist of head, making sure that they know what they got. Recount the number of commandos, recount the number of charges, recount the number of special equipment that's with them. You know, we're, we're going over the GRGs under the red lamp while we're out there at HLZ posture, just redundantly going through that in their head, just preparing for what we know. Because that, that is the one now with this mission. We don't fly in a softball targets. We know when we go in, it's, it's going to be a fight. There's a lot of obstacles at this phase in the war right now. Uh, a lot of the American people, and I'll give you a, a couple different aspects of this thing, uh, through the eyes of the American people. Uh, when I deployed to Afghanistan, I was told by a family member, well, there's still fighting going on there. <laughs> so, uh, in the eyes of the American public, I'd say they're war weary, and uh, it, a lot of them don't know what's going on over here, don't have a good picture of what's going on over here. So some of the challenges are, um, you know, feeling like you have the support back home. Uh, we definitely have the support of the people that know us personally, but it's it's the public opinion that you know I, I value, uh, and I just it's it's difficult because I don't feel like there's a proper picture of what's going on over here. Uh, at this stage in the war, uh, like I had mentioned before, we have um, we're we are in a situation where we're leaving soon. Uh, and the next teams that come in are going to be uh, strictly advisor roles. Um, so we are trying to balance the 
independent operations of the AA, um, commandos and ANSF and uh, doing our partner operations as well. But the partner operations are starting to become a little more hybrid where it's, uh, uh, we provide them with the mission sooner. They have a lot more say in it. They have uh, a better understanding and they help plan it. Uh, at times we have, um, in the past, uh, there was no issues with uh, uh, using demolition. There was no issues with uh, um, entering compounds. Once you got into a, an area, you could uh, figure out which was the best compound to strong point in and set up shop. Um, and then as far as air to ground ordinance, it, it, it's become a big issue. Uh, you know, we don't want any uh, uh, civilian casualties. Um, because that's not what we're here for. Um, but the Taliban have such a good um, campaign against us and propaganda against us that any time that we use air to ground, even if uh, there wasn't any civilian casualties, uh, they will spin it to that there was. Uh, and then basically whoever gets the word out first is the one that everybody's going to believe. How does the constant change in ROE constantly affect our operations? Um, that can be a two-sided question. Uh, I, I would start off by saying I understand where some of the ROE considerations come in uh, at this phase of the war. Uh, we are trying to minimize unneeded civilian casualties. Uh, it puts in a large restraint in the way of supporting us when we get hit from an overwhelming force who is smart enough to barricade himself and with civilians. Um, they also know this ROE and it it, it, it it endangers us. Now when it comes down to it, it if we're pinned down, unable, maneuver, etc. Uh, will they drop in support? Not if they see those civilians, I don't think. So that, that puts us in inherent problems. Um, so that that's the biggest way the ROE affects us is mostly in the way of CAS as I see it and the enemy has capitalized on that. Uh, the enemy knows not to move in the open with weapons. You know, now they move to cache A points. They know where the helicopter and the ISR platforms cannot see them uh, down the green zones, and they utilize that. And then they get into the buildings, uh, and they utilize the innocent uh, bystanders, essentially, as, as human shields from air to ground uh, fires. Um, so what does that do to us? That causes us to either directly try to engage them uh, while they're already fortified, causing more casualties, or it causes us to uh, have to pull back and, uh, and, and, and try to draw them out, essentially, um, which, which rarely works. Um, past that, the ROE, you know, it's kind of always remained the same uh, as far as uh, right to self-defense. I had no issues with that. Um, and that's a good thing, in my opinion. Um, the force ratios that go back and forth, uh, I know that doesn't really fall under ROE, but it kind of does. That always kind of affects things because it puts a higher risk to the forces on the ground. Uh, you know, in my opinion, it's either I take my full package with me that's capable of sustaining and fighting and set by itself, if need be, or I take no package. Uh, it shouldn't be a sundown package uh, because you never really know what's going to happen to the heart of the partner force in a real bad way and what's going to happen if there's an overwhelming force that masses on them and starts massing on our overwatch position if I'm sitting there with a slim line manned force because they don't want us to have too many U.S. personnel on the ground then um, I, I'm setting myself up for, for, for failure on that one. Hey, Masood. Hey, be in the middle with us so we can direct both elements. Let's do it.
Hey, well, I'm in that building, right? Yeah, I want, I want a strong point in this building so we can overwatch them. Corners. Corners, go. Yeah, keep me updated if our south's about to light us up. All right, brother. That's all of us. All right, Delta One, go ahead and push. We're uh, right there. We're about to go to One big fucking ambush. Hey, let's go, push. No, no, no. Hey, hey, save your energy. Let's go. Yeah, okay. You're good. All right. Let's go. Commando, what is it? All right, commandos. Hey! Commandos are over there. Let's go! Son of a bitch! Fucking do this! Are you on command? Yeah. Dan, this is Jim. Roger, is that your element engaging? Can you see the enemy is shooting at us? Yeah, one six after us, one six zero. I'm trying to fucking hold down. We are definitely coming down and over the fucking maneuver on this one. Push up to the river, man. I got some guys moving towards your direction right now. I'm covering their egress. Hey, hold Hold Run, 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 run. SF, go first. We go last. Hey. Yeah, and then we'll, they're going to hold for us, and we'll go. Do it. Bound it. Bound it. Oh, bound it, bound it. Yeah. Hey, bound it. Bound it, me. Hey, go ahead and down, man. I got your. I, I'm holding down back here. Go, go, go. I got one, two. Go, jump, jump, jump. Commando! Over here, commando, commando! Commando! Stand by, actually, we're going to break contact right now. We're going to fucking break contact right through fucking Rich's position. Hey, I got, I got seven commandos moving. I'm going to move with them, Scotty. All right. Shit. Are we good? Head count, go with you guys. You got everybody? One, two, three, four. Hey, what's Go, go. Hey, 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 where'd you guys take contact from? Basically from our six o'clock. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Let's get the fuck away from this open area. 
Come on. There's just fucking targets right here. Come on. Hey, we're making our way down into the fucking riverbed right now. Hey! Check fire! Check fire! That is us moving down the fucking river. Go, 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 commanders. Who are they shooting at? Hey, we're close enough we can push back. Yeah. Here, let's get it. Hey, let's go. Let's start pushing back. Uh, this rotation being the last rotation, not only to conduct command uh, operations with the commandos, but possibly the last uh, combat rotation I go on is is a strange problem set to contemplate. You know, I spent uh, the la I spent one third of my life either in Afghanistan or preparing to go to Afghanistan, and um, we lost a lot of good guys along the way. People that knew my name. Uh, there's still guys over here fighting and you know we got brothers on both sides uh, the American side and the partner force side I've had uh, I owe my life to Afghan uh, soldiers or policemen uh, that fought for me and uh, after America leaves they'll still be here fighting so it's, um, it's, a, it's a strange problem set to consider you know it's what I've, I've become used to it's what I've gotten accustomed to is training for Afghanistan, training for combat, going to Afghanistan fighting, and, uh, you know, uh, what's next? Uh, that's a hard one to swallow. Um, I think guys that uh, have lost brothers and, uh, you know, been injured and stood by, you know, our partner force for years, um, yeah, it, it's very difficult to let that go. Um, not many people that haven't been uh, at war or in special forces understand what um, I'm saying right now, but it, it's a difficult to... Uh, we want to be with our families. We want to be at home and um, playing with our kids, but at the same sense we're torn because we want to be here. Um, standing by the brothers that are still here fighting and uh, fight for the ones that we lost uh, because they're no longer with us and honor them. Uh, I pretty much have spent my entire adult life doing this job in the Army and it's all been spent in this country. Uh, this would be trip six for me. I've seen it go from its infamous, infamous stages uh, to where we're at right now and the, the amount of progression that the uh, Afghan government and the military as a whole has made is phenomenal um, and spending that much time over here and dedicating as much of my life as I have to it and as many friends as, I've, as I have lost in this fight uh, it, it, it'll, it'll really bother me if we don't allow this to finish correctly if we allow this to return back to the way it was before we got here within a short amount of time because we pulled out a little prematurely. Really the big question is like how do we adapt, how do we reintegrate back into uh, you know uh, the American populace. There's going to be a lot of guys uh, 
with a lot of uh, issues adapting. And a lot of guys are going to talk about it. A lot of guys are going to be too proud to talk about it. So uh, we just really need to have the support of American people back home, uh, family and friends. Uh, just understand that there's going to be uh, a lot of people dealing with a lot of problems and uh, issues that they may or may not be willing to talk about uh, just because they're adjusting from what they've uh, become accustomed to, what they're used to. Uh, so it's, it's, you can always, there's that saying, uh, you can take the dog out of the fight, but you can't take the fight out the dog. So uh, it's not that we're bloodthirsty, we're not warmongers, it's just we're war fighters. And, uh, we got that mentality, and uh, without an outlet or uh, a means to uh, do what we're trained to do, it's going to be it's going to take some uh, adaptation. So, yeah, that's the best uh, way I can answer that question. Is I don't know, I don't know how to. I'm just going to do what I can while I'm here and cherish this rotation that I can and do what I can, you know, to keep the fight going. Uh, just to make it better for the guys that will be here after we leave and the guys that we've lost. So to tell us that it's over now is, it's tough. Uh, so it's uh, definitely not easy. But like I said, I, I feel that the training and the um, stuff that we were able to provide to Afghanistan, they can stand and they'll be okay. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight and uh, just first of all, it's an honor to stand here with these men. As uh, we prepare to go into possibly a very kinetic situation, God, I just thank you so much that we can come to you for all things. I thank you that we can be men of God and yet uh, hard warriors, that we don't have to choose between one or the other. I pray, Father, tonight that you will instill us with uh, just supernatural insight, that you'll help our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our mind to think and to conceive things that normally we wouldn't be able to do. God, may we glorify you in all that's done. I pray that should tonight be one of our last, God, that you will allow us to go out with honor. God, should we be put in the position to take another human's life tonight, Father, I pray that you help us to do it with honor and according to a code. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Protect us. We love you.